Good afternoon, everyone. 10 items you might not find in the supermarket anymore. Meeting 2030 goals. Americans have to live in 640 square feet. Uh, no thank you. And we need to reduce energy down to the red line. So everybody's equal. Italy getting a jump. 25 degrees Celsius limit on aircon. New truck tax. F-150, a thousand bucks in Canada. Mortgage rates skyrocketing. Palm oil futures skyrocketing. Food nationalism now declared across Indonesia. In 1945, we grew 45% of our food. Today, less than one-tenth of one percent. In the visual of where the economy in our world is heading at the end of 2022, get off centralized systems. Check this out. Many people today struggle to manage their weight, but this is more true than ever after the age of 20, because after the age of 20, our body's metabolism slows down by as much as 4% every decade. By the time we're 50, we've experienced a 10% drop or more in our metabolism. That's a risk to health. That's why I highly recommend adaptwithketo.com. This product works by increasing the ketone levels inside your body, which in turn support boosted metabolism. A scoop a day. I saw improvements for my energy levels while working on the farm. And the best part is I never had to cut out carbs or make other changes to my diet. And if you've been looking for a great way to support your weight management goals, you're going to love adaptwithketo.com. And for the next 24 hours, take 51% off your order, adaptwithketo.com, or click on the link in the description box below. And now on with the video. And 10 items you might not find in your grocery store and why. Well, they keep saying supply chains, but we all know it's about fertilizer shortages, food resource nationalism, Inavailability for farmers to get their inputs and everybody blaming everybody else, plus blockades by sea. So the list will be avocados, paper products, canned meat products, fresh meat products. And you can see the same things that were lean during COVID are coming back double lean this time because food processing facilities have burned down and there's embargoes everywhere. So less shipping across the planet we're just going to watch a lot of things dry up in the store so buy two while you're out and that would include cooking oils check out the malaysian crude pump oil futures up and up because they said they're going to cease exports and as soon as a major producer ceases exports of anything whether it be gold or fertilizer or palm oil there's a disruption across the planet and this coming out of Indonesia from the president. Meeting people's food demand is priority over tax. Forget the export revenues. Forget the exports. We're keeping it in so there's no food riots on the streets. Thank you. And let's dive back in history here. The monarchical experiment. Crisis of 1789. Wheat crop of 1788 had been poor. And wheat in France to that point was indispensable the staff of life. It became so prohibitively expensive that the serfs of the day, oh, I mean citizens not living in the castles, were relegated to move back to rye and barley. Protests came. We see the similarities. It is so stark. It's actually frightening. So think of this as the year 1788. And we're going to come into these food insecurity times at the end of the harvest season here, 2022. It's going to upset society anyway. But if it repeats in history like this and there's less farm imports because there's more civil unrest, more supply chain breakdowns, more monetary problems, fiat's not accepted, governments are not honoring contract between government, we're going to see an exact play out of what we saw here. So the year 1789, one year past that, well... Let them eat cake as they were toppled and replaced by somebody who could feed them. Here we go again. Are you ready for it? No BS assessment. We are all in some serious conundrum right here. We're going to have to figure our way out of this and starting by growing food, getting a few extra supplies at the supermarket, 
It's going to start to hit right now. There's a lot of awareness right at this point. So I'm still calling it the end of May, first week of June. 20% of the global populace will be fully awake to what's happening. Those who watch financial news and business news and also ag news. And if you can put those together and you start to see international geopolitical news of embargoes, food resource nationalism, they're going to all wake up at the same time. Those 20% have a lot of money and they're going to start spending it quickly. Crop tours at the end of July and August will set 50% of the planet off in awareness of what's happening in October of 2022 at the harvest season. The rest of the planet will wake up and they'll realize they were left way behind. They're going to get real angry. Which is also surprising is 1945, Americans grew 45% of their food in the backyards. Victory Gardens, but then after that, they were told, oh, don't worry about the Victory Garden. We don't need to plant anymore. Come back on the centralized system. Get your food at the supermarket. All good. No more rationing. Thanks for fighting. Everything going back to normal. And then now, one-tenth of one percent. That's astonishing. I thought it would have been much higher than that, at least three percent. That's the kind of odds you're working against in this October event. And researchers here are not able to find any current example of low energy societies providing decent standard of living for citizens. Yet, to meet Agenda 2030 goals, Americans must cut energy use by 90%, live in 640 square feet, and fly once every three years. Uh, no. No, thank you. I return that back to you. I do not accept, and I won't. And if everybody says that, this stops. And that might frame it in something that, oh, your lifestyle needs to descend a little bit. But let's put it into graphic form here. What they're talking about is that deep red line far left, energy use compatible with the goals. And where Canada, United States, Finland, Norway sit with the blue lines exceeding energy use at 225 gigajoules per person per year. Canada using the most, even more than the states. Well, irregardless of if it's Canada, United States, Finland, whatever, you're going to have to reel it back all the way to the red line. Truly, that's where the goal is. So a lot of these things we're seeing right now are making this happen. Whether you want to or not, you're being drug backward. And a perfect example in Canada, a new tax proposed on... SUVs and pickup trucks. Well, I use a pickup on my farm, but in Canada, I would have to pay an extra thousand dollars for the Ford F-150. And look at that, four grand for an SUV or a heavy duty type of vehicle. Now what's unknown in the writing, I went to the other document as well, looked it up, but I did not see if it was a year by year tax or if it was a one-time tax. Irregardless, not the right time to be instituting this, if ever, especially with the declining economy happening. And uh, jumping over to the carbon taxes here for Canada, what is the rate that is being charged at the moment? Per ton, $45 BC. Now I'd looked at this back when it was around between eight and $20, but the primary and final price should be around 200 with the new carbon trading market, which will be a new leg of the economy, a new asset class to build wealth off of, to restabilize and actually start a new functional fiat money system. And on the left there, total fuel emissions, 2000, 2019, you have China way to the left, US, EU, India, Russia, and the rest of the world. And speaking of the rest of the world, Argentina, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and now Lebanon all say completely bankrupt. No payments from us for anything. So do you remember the video talking about Sri Lankan food shortages and fertilizer shortages I did just two weeks ago, saying that as we progress in a very quick fashion into the planting season here, you would start to see the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth country calling bankruptcy and needing to restructure so they could get food to the people and not have to worry about external payments. Now we see it again. So this is just gonna continue. All of these are just going to continue and amplify in terms of percentages, reductions of lifestyle, and centralized systems not delivering what we used to get so you're supposed to get used to it. I say we don't get used to it. And we start asking questions here why so much money is being printed in the trillions. 
Runaway inflation is all I can say. And then you'll understand why the Netherlands consumer confidence is low, low, and lower. Wait a minute. That chart goes back to 1986. That's a very long time for this now to be the unhappiest and least confident in your economy after all the things we went through in the 80s, 90s, the year 2001, and continuing on. But Italy is going to be next in the unhappy category, putting a 25 degrees Celsius limit on air conditioning. So 20 degrees Celsius is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So they're putting their max cooling somewhere around 76 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit, depending if you can tweak it one or two degrees. And the top left, Italy start rationing energy. Wait, that's a very different headline than putting a limit on air conditioning. See, both headlines are there. Which one's scarier? They're doing with this food also. So then they have to put in there, oh, being homeless due to rising interest rates. And right over on the right there, Canada just hit a three-decade high of 6.7%. That's above the U.S. at 5.3%. Well, I saw the rates coming out on Wolf Street today and 5.37%. And the reason I bring this up is because the more people pay for mortgages, the less money they have for other things. But at the same time, food's going into a hyperinflationary period where things are up 30% in a day, 50% doubling tripling not available so an enormous amount of food cost is going to be incurred by the average family moving forward and the gasoline prices we've all seen i don't like paying above four bucks a gallon i actually don't like paying above 25 cents a gallon for gasoline it should be not even used because we could use magnetic motors electrogravitics and earth's magnetic field to power devices that do the exact same thing but you know that's a different story for a different time But with all those rising costs amongst everybody who lives, you must eat. You can't not eat. And then if your interest rate's a variable rate, it's going to be worse than 2008 and nine. And these rates are going up. So let's take a look, just a little bit of interest rate rise, what it does for the monthly payment. And then you can see how much is taken out of the economy on a monthly basis just because of a couple points higher. What if you can't afford your food, then what? Because Hungary's lifting interest rates by another full one point, which is unheard of going up that fast to 5.4, very close to the states. Kazakhstan at 14% raised its rate from 13.5. And Mexico now at 7.72, and they are actually panicking, trying to get it down around 3%. But you know, that's not going to happen. So let's look at the mortgage rates here. I did this calculator just so you understand how much money is going to be affected by just these little tiny rate increases. So the mortgage calculator on the left, 30 year, 3.2%. And that was 3.2 just a few months back. And then on the right side, we look at 5.37% at today's rate. So notice the difference in the payment. Left side is $1,891 on a $350,000 home for one month. And that same home, if you're going to buy it at this little bit higher interest rate, just two months later at 5.3% is $2,200. And that's 300 and some dollars out of that person's pocket. Okay, we may be able to live with that. But interest rates are predicted to go around 18% this round. 18! We are nowhere near the end of where this is going. So I put in a simple 10% because I know we're going to go there. I'm front running it. We are going to be at 10% before the end of the year easily. So look at the mortgage calculator up there, $3,293. That's substantially more there. We're talking about $1,100 more on a payment of the exact same property just because the interest rate's higher. Now you start taking thousands, plural, of dollars out of people's pockets and food prices are rising and energy's rising and you see where it's going to lead us just like this failed rocket launch attempt here. This is a great overlay of what's happening with our economy and our world, our delivery systems, our fertilizer production, the lack of farm inputs, the famine that's inbound, the infighting between governments, the blockades, the rationing, the resource nationalism, and it's all gonna end up just like this as we move forward into the harvest season. Once the world's aware, this is what you're gonna see in a literal sense, happening across the spectrum of our planet in the mind and on the streets as people become extremely angry. 
Are you ready for it? Protection, safety, protect what you grew. I talk more about this in many Ice Age Conversations podcast three times a week. Anywhere podcasts are hosted across the net. And please remember, getting ready to plant, check out trueleafmarket.com. See what types of seeds they have for different grow zones and also storable foods. My Patriots Plant Adapt 2030, 25 year shelf life. And I appreciate you watching and spending your valuable time because time is incredibly valuable. It's the time we have left to get prepared for what's here. It's already affecting the planet. It's really difficult to dismiss it now with so many things that are dovetailing in. And see, the reason I was talking about the banks not paying their sovereign debt is once that occurs a few more times and the economies become larger and larger, then the entire financial systems collapse. Also, with the London Metals Exchange, they're not going to be doing gold contracts anymore. They can't get the good delivery from Russia, so they're going to stop allowing delivery of gold through the LBMA. That is truly the base of the monetary system, the amount of physical gold around the planet. And once the futures contracts stop, sovereign debt settlement stops, people's confidence stops, things are blockaded and not forthcoming. Look at China. It still hasn't worked its way out. There's going to be massive repercussions for years from this event right now, just from China. So in the near term, at least up to October, nothing's really coming from China. They're locking down Beijing now. So it's going to be another month's plural. And they got 10,000, 12,000 ships offshore. How long is that going to take to get through? And what about the exports out? I mean, it's really going to take a lot to untwist that knotted rope there. Food prices increasing, and everywhere you look now, everywhere you look, it's about shortages, shortages, rationing, and shortages. And I'm glad that you've followed my channel, or if you're a new viewer here, thank you for tuning in. And those of you who've watched for several years, seeing the progression of this, the electromagnetic field and the interplanetary magnetic field changing our jet streams, we're in for some trying times. Why do you think all this is happening at the moment, this reset? Well, our current world won't last through it. So you're going to have to brace, embrace, and get ready for a new emergence of a new world and take control back as we're going through this reset. Bye for now, and I will see you next video.